Welcome back to IU Radiology Case of the Day. My name is Nick Kuntz and I'm a neuroradiologist and uh, I've got another interesting brain imaging case of the day for you. As always, I'd like to start out by saying that all of the educational content uh, as part of this presentation has been completely de-identified in order to protect patient privacy. So this is a patient who presented with an acute onset of confusion. And I have three images for you to look at. The image on the left is an axial diffusion tensor image. Uh, this is for the uh, trace sequence. The image in the middle is an axial ADC map that corresponds with the same location, same slice. And then the image on the right is an axial 3D flare. So take just a few minutes to look at those images. Again, keep in mind the history here was an acute episode of confusion. Try to put that all together. Okay, so what are the findings and what's the diagnosis? Okay, so let's start with our imaging. First up, we have our axial diffusion weighted imaging, and you'll see that we have a punctate focus of bright diffusion signal intensity that is centered in the left hippocampus as denoted here by the yellow arrow. Now, if we look on the ADC map, we can see that there's matching punctate decreased signal intensity. So this is diffusion bright, and it's ADC dark. So this has true reduced diffusivity. And if we look on the flare imaging, we can see that there's just a little tiny amount of increased flare signal intensity uh, right here at the tip of the yellow arrow that corresponds with the area of reduced diffusivity. So we're dealing with an acute infarction, right? Well, maybe, but probably not. So what does this patient have? This is a patient with transient global amnesia, and this is an incompletely understood, and honestly, it's a fairly controversial clinical entity. Uh, these patients um, present with sudden memory loss. They have both anterograde and retrograde amnesia. And it's very you know, classic in terms of its clinical presentation. The controversial part is what causes it and what does it look like on imaging? Typically, these patients won't have any other neurological deficits. And then uh, sort of by definition, they recover usually by about 24 hours. They may have a few lingering uh, symptoms, but in general, these patients have full recovery at about uh, a day after the episode. In terms of the etiology, that's where it gets really controversial. Um, it's possible that it's arterial ischemia. There's been thought that maybe venous congestion plays a role. Is this some sort of an ictal event? Is it a complex migraine? Uh, or are these patients having psychogenic illness? Well, None of these uh, really nicely describe this and, and fit this uh, in, in a neat manner. Probably the one that comes the closest based on the imaging appearance and uh, some of the clinical manifestations would be arterial ischemia. But unlike regular ischemia, the diffusion signal abnormality in this case may not happen right away. It may take several hours to show up. And these patients don't seem to have other risk factors necessarily for arterial uh, ischemia either. Uh, so it really doesn't fit that uh, that uh, description well at all. Um, so it remains a controversial entity. There are some, uh, some clinical diagnostic criteria. First of all, it needs to be a witnessed attack. And these patients have to have anterograde amnesia during the attack. They have uh, cognitive impairment that's limited only to amnesia. And there shouldn't be any sort of clouding of consciousness or loss of personal identity during the event. These patients also lack focal neurological signs or symptoms, so that sort of is a little bit different than what we would tend, uh, tend to see with an acute ischemic event. And they have no epileptic features. Uh, these attacks should resolve within 24 hours, although you may have some mild neuropsychological deficits that can last up to a few days, but in general, a rapid recovery, uh, something that would sort of argue against ischemia again. Um, and then these patients cannot have any uh, uh, concordant head injury or active epilepsy as well. So with transient global uh, amnesia, they do have a classic imaging appearance, and it's been described as a punctate focus of reduced diffusivity within the hippocampus. This is most prominent within the first 24 to 48 hours, but it is variable. And what's interesting is it can be multiple, can be multiple on the same side, it can be multiple bilateral. Uh, that's a little bit less common, but usually uh, if you do see something, it's going to be that punctate focus of reduced diffusivity. In rare instances, you may see some very subtle flare signal intensity with it, uh, like this case shows. Uh, 
but oftentimes these are normal. And, and I've looked at our data over the last uh, 15 years at, at Indiana University, and the vast majority of patients that get imaged for the clinical indication of transient global amnesia have had a normal brain MRI. Now this may just simply be due to the lead time uh, bias effect here in which the patients come to the ER and they, maybe they get imaged early and uh, they're imaged before the, uh, the uh, signal abnormality manifests. It's tough to tell, but in general, in our experience anyway, uh, these patients oftentimes have a normal MRI of the brain. There have been some um, additional reported uh, findings, or maybe I should say controversial findings within the literature. Um, some, uh, uh, some folks have reported that these patients can have hippocampal uh, hypoperfusion that's been described on either perfusion-weighted imaging or PET. That I think is uh, maybe not controversial, but it's not something that you'll commonly uh, see. Most of these patients uh, don't end up getting PET scans, and um, unless you're uh, a site that does uh, standard perfusion-weighted imaging, um, you may not be imaging these patients uh, with that modality. There have been uh, a few studies that have uh, reported jugular venous valve insufficiency, uh, resulting in retrograde flow uh, uh, during valve salva that can be sent on Doppler ultrasound. So that's where the venous congestion uh, hypothesis comes into, into play here. But again, not something that's uh, really well uh, detailed and well explained. Um, and it certainly is not a universally accepted um, uh, uh, feature of, of this particular entity. Uh, so here's a nice paper that I think is worth taking a look at for all the residents and fellows out there. Um, this is just a current review of, of what's known about transient global amnesia um, by Spiegel and colleagues. So it's it's worth taking a peek at. It's it's sort of an interesting and, and pretty quick read uh, that deals a lot with the uh, really the clinical entity of transient global amnesia and talks a little bit about the imaging. Okay, so let's wrap this up. This was a case of transient global amnesia and the key imaging features to know about are the classic finding of a punctate focus of reduced diffusivity within the hippocampus. Now, importantly, this can be multifocal and it can be bilateral, but most commonly it's going to be unilateral. They may or may not have some subtle increased flare signal abnormality, but it should correspond right with that little dot of restricted diffusion. It should not be diffuse flare signal abnormality throughout the hippocampus. And they really should not have any other abnormalities on the conventional MRI sequences that you perform. There are a couple pitfalls to keep in mind. First of all, in my experience at IU, um, that initial MRI may be normal. And in fact, in our, in our experience, the majority of these cases uh, have been uh, normal on the MRI. You can certainly uh, see that diffusion-weighted signal abnormality, but it tends to go away usually within about 24 to 72 hours. Um, and it doesn't seem to have lasting signal abnormality in that, uh, in that location. Um, and whenever you see that reduced diffusivity, like in this case, it should be punctate. If you're seeing gyroform or geographic reduced diffusivity, you're probably dealing with an either an infarct or a seizure uh, or potentially even encephalitis. So keep that in mind. It should be punctate and it shouldn't be a geographic or curvilinear uh, distribution of that signal abnormality. So as always, thanks for tuning in to IU Radiology Case of the Day. Uh, you can follow along on Twitter at, at N.A. Kuntz, and I would invite you to check out our complete collection of Case of the Day materials. They can be found at radtf.iuhealth.org slash COTD. Thank you.